Hey everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. So, and the last Airbender today. Um, technically it is an anime, I guess. <laughs> um, so, landscape orientation page. Use a pencil and hit pause if I go too fast. So I'm on landscape, he's got his fists together. So we got the three arrows, you know, the two on his hands and the one on his forehead. So we're gonna start with his eyes. Center point of my page is about here. I would say that that's where his nose will end up being. So we just go up, over to the right a little bit. So you're just up here, set from the center point, up a little bit, over to the right. And then we're gonna curve a line up and over. And then you wanna, you wanna thicken up this line, right? So make it nice and dark. And it's kind of thicker on this end than it is down here. Kind of gets skinnier back here. And we have a little bit of a hook that comes down this side. So like it comes down and then hooks into here. Like that. That's the kind of thing we're going for. Then, bottom eyelid line. So just down here, curve a line over. Like so. Can come up this way a little bit. They don't have to join. Like so. And then his iris. So a circle with the top cut off just here. Like so. And his pupil. Just here in the middle. Like so. And then we just do an eyelid line coming off the corner here. <clears throat> and then we'll come over and start his other eye. Right, so his eyes are real big, right? So yeah, I'd say it's pupil to the edge of his iris will fit inside here. So like three quarters of his eye. So pupil, sorry, not pupil. Tear duct to the side of his iris will fit inside here, okay? That's the distance you wanna go for. And then you're gonna curve that line up again. Like so, and then down the back, and thicken it up a bit. That kind of shape again. And then the bottom of his eye curves across, like so. Goes up the back a little bit. And then his iris, Circle with the top cut off, going up underneath his eyelid. And his pupil, just here. And we give him an eyelid line just coming out the back, just there. And so his eyebrows, so he's like, his head is kind of bowed, you know, he's like in a meditation position and his eyebrows are real high up, right? So they're like up here. We go up. And then down the back. Like so. And then we just add an extra edge line to these. Down into there. Okay, real raised high up. And then the other one on this side, up, down, and go back. Okay, so we'll go down and do his nose. So pretty simple. So he's two nostrils, just there. And then the sides of his nose come up around the side here. Like so. So he's got a big smile, right? So we got, um, starting in the middle, 
curves up the side like so and then like a smile line just here you leave a little bit of a gap and then go over and do the other side so it like comes down like so like that and then maybe like a smile line just up here as well then maybe a little bit of a bottom lip line just here And his chin, round chin, just down here. So now to check your proportions. So again, eyes really big, right? And his head is kind of tilted forward. So, so I would say pupil, so middle of his eye pupil to the nose, right? Is about the same as the nose to the chin. So this is about halfway between here and here, right? So this, and this are about the same height, right? And then the bottom lip is about halfway between the nose and the chin, the bottom of the nose and the chin. The bottom lip line is about halfway. See, same. Okay, approximately. Halfway between here and here, bottom lip, okay? So once you get those proportions, we bring the jaw up the side Stop about mouth level and underneath the edge of his eye. So you want to go diagonal this way and you want to be stopping just about here, see? And across from his mouth. So remember, his head is tilted forward, right? So that's why this area seems much smaller than this area. And then we'll go up like so. So, and then we have his ears right here, okay? So like above, they start above his eyebrows because his head is tilted forward, just here. And then we bring it down, like so. And ear lobes just here. So if you look in a mirror and you tilt your head forward and back, you'll be able to see how the height of your ear changes in relation to your eyebrows and stuff. Normally this would be lined up with the top if he was just looking straight forward because his head, head is tilted forward, it changes. Perspective. It's kind of cool when you think about it a lot, which I do and did <laughs> when I was in college. So ear lines like this. Like so, some more lines inside, like that. Okay, do pretty much the same thing on the other side. Up, down. Bones and ligaments inside there. The easiest way is like, just like a letter, sort of J like that. Like some people would even leave it like that. But then you can add like extra bumps and stuff like so okay okay so bald head and um, sometimes I find bald heads even harder than <laughs> hair heads <laughs> so it's because like they're so even on both sides and smooth and stuff so top of his head is up there right so if you're wondering how high up you want to go I would say the eyebrows are about halfway yeah so the eyebrows mark halfway between his head and his chin. Right, so here and here is about the same as here and here. So once you get that distance, you bring his head down. On that side. And then we're gonna try and do that on the other side without messing up, <laughs> but I probably will. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Keep going, keep going, don't stop. Oh, not bad. Bit of a bump there, but hey, not bad. I think we can see like a little bump on the back of his ears as well. Just there. 
Okay, that big arrow that comes down the front of his forehead, so it comes right down. Of course, this is in blue, so it's not really drawn in black or pencil. It's just colored in. So if you are coloring, like, just do blue with a blue pencil or a blue ink or whatever you have. And then this comes across, across to there. And we bring this up the back of his head. Like so. Two fists knocking together like this at the front, right? So, they're like down here, so. They're just down a good bit underneath his chin, and we have the top of this fist and the thumb might go down like that. Same pretty much on the other side. Okay, those two shapes underneath. So we're about half his face down again. So I see like eyes to chin, about the same as chin to top of his knuckles, right? And then speaking of knuckles, so knuckles start here. So these are bumps for his fingers and then knuckles come down like this. Okay, kind of like a zigzag line. One, two, three, four. We should see four, yeah, like that. And then pretty much same thing on this side. So we've got like a round turn first. And then we got like four knuckles. And these ones go like touch this one. Come out, go in. Then come out. And then down into there. And then down. Back like that. Okay. So like some of them overlap and stuff, so you can't really see much. And then we have some skin folds just here, up around his thumb. And like the palm of his hand and stuff, just there. Okay, so the bottom of his hand then comes up like so. And we've got like a wrist bone just here, and then the forearm will come down all the way up there. And then his other side of his wrist comes down this way. And then joins his forearm like up and down, like here somewhere in the bottom and elbow. And then his elbow will come like angled up and then back into here. That goes underneath his clothes somewhere. And then his bicep, I think, goes off underneath his cloak somewhere under here. So this is his cloak. It goes up underneath. Ooh. And then so. Right, so his other arm, pretty much the same thing. So, bottom of his hand comes up like so, and then like a wrist bump. And then his forearm comes down and up. Be along so the other side of his wrist then over here same sort of thing and then his forearm kind of bumps up a little bit and down and then curve line for his forearm muscle and then his elbow Bring up this side and this goes up around his arm. So we go underneath his cloak here, so it's only over one shoulder. So on this side, we can see 
This goes all the way up and connects back up to his neck and into his face, okay? So this will go bumping up. That's his tricep. And then his bicep is in around the other side, so that comes up in here. Then the side of his body and like his ribs. Let's see his, so we have an armpit there and then like a bit of a chest muscle there. And then that comes back that way. And then his shoulder comes up. And then it goes into there. And then this will go up into his face, just into there. And then his cloak comes across his chest, like so, and comes out the other side of his hand down here. And you should see some of the rest of the side of his body kind of in here somewhere. And we can see his collarbones just going up that way, going up that way, maybe the other side of it. So we've got us up here going up into his shoulder. And folds and stuff for his cloak coming down here. So like bumps, lots of them. This is like the orange part, and then there's a yellow part that comes down here. Okay, bumps down the whole way, down like so, and then some extra sort of fold lines and stuff just coming down. Along there, and it comes in underneath his wrist, like goes that way. And this has some extra fold lines and things down here, too. Like that, and okay, so the arrow's on his fist, so arrow pointing that way and then this one goes that way like so and then so they kind of twist and go behind his elbow like down in here like that and then So, same thing then on this one. So this one goes down towards his elbow. And remember these are blue as well. Like so. Okay, so I think that that's probably the best I can do. Just adding like maybe some knuckle lines or something just there, just to make them stand out a little bit more. But that's probably it. Can't really see anything else. So there you go, how to draw Ang, the last airbender. Thanks for watching guys, hope it was helpful. See you in the next one.